Hello friends, welcome to UK Dreamers. Today I've got a very very special guest here to discuss about hematology, my dear friend Dr. Antra Kumar. So welcome Antra, welcome to the vlog. Thank you so much Aman. And heartiest congratulations for becoming a ST3 Registrar, Specialty Registrar in Hematology. Thank you so much, thank you. So guys, today's video would be about, Antra would guide us a little, how does uh, the recruitment works if you want to apply for group 2 specialties. And since she's doing her training in hematology, so she'll tell us a little more about the recruitment process for hematology, how is the training uh, in hematology, and you know, her pearls of wisdom for the aspirants who want to train in hematology. So over to you, Antra. Okay, uh, so uh, I have a background of uh, acute uh, internal medicine in India. Uh, but I wanted to uh, have a speciality which is focused. So hence, I felt like the group one specialities were not nice, uh, not for me because you know I was more into something like uh, it was like a focused speciality in which I didn't have to deal with the general medicine you know background or general medicine patients. So group two specialities made sense for me, and hematology is a speciality which is a bit of everything. It is clinical, it is lab work, it has got a lot of research potential. So I always felt that hematology is the speciality for me. So I worked in hematology as a trust grade uh, initially after moving here to the UK. And following that, I applied for training within six months of joining here. And I had completed my alternate competencies form signed back home. But of course, it is not the same now. But there are two competencies forms, as you guys might be knowing, that there is one for the group one specialities and there is one for the group two specialities, which are the competencies are a bit different because in the group one specialities, you have to prove your acute med uh, background. So you need your ITU and AMU your, you know, competencies to be signed off. But in the alternate competencies one you uh, for group two, you don't need them. So that's the difference between the both the competency forms. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's basically you need to have a bit of uh, uh, experience in the form of uh, maybe a publication, a QIP project or an audit project, mm -hmm. mostly in hematology. Uh, if it's in some other speciality, still it is counted. But if you want to be, you know, very focused on the speciality, it's better that you get an audit done in that particular speciality. Okay. And then you apply for the, you know, you, that's how you kind of have for, fill that assessment form and then you apply and then you are long listed based on these, uh, you know, uh, uh, like uh, indicators, indicators yeah. like, you know, you know, the research papers, your publications and your audit projects. And if you had uh, held any leadership or managerial roles, that's also counted. And then eventually you get shortlisted after that and then the interviews. So, uh, as Andra was saying that, I remember that she came to the UK last year in January and she applied in round two of the specialty training and she joined this February as a specialty registrar. So, uh, I guess uh, she's given us a brief overview. So, let's go a little more in detail if that's okay. Yeah. So, as you said, like about the alternate competency form. So, how did you know about this, like the round one, round two, who told you about this? like? So uh, there were other colleagues who had applied in uh, round one who, to, who asked me to apply for round two. Uh, but again, I wasn't really sure about, uh, you know, the speciality, you know, how to apply. I thought that, you know, you need to have a lot of competencies. And since I wasn't trained as an IMT in this country, so I always thought that I lacked those because back home we didn't need to do all that. But uh, I looked through the competency form, the alternate competencies and the points like I just mentioned. So I felt that these are just little things which we have done back home, but we haven't really you know, kept them as an evidence much. So of course, I had to collect the evidence from back home that, okay, I had this poster presentation. I have this research, you know, I was a part of this research article in this journal. So all that I had to, you know, kind of um, get from back home and I understood that few of the things are something that we never do in India like I just mentioned the QIP and the audit so that's something that I you know actively did I mean I spoke to my educational supervisor in hematology and he helped me do a QIP and that really carried a lot of marks and because mm -hmm. it was right around six points or so mm -hmm. and that really showed my uh, you know 
commitment to that speciality. So these are the kinds of things which I could get it done in within six months, you know, getting the evidence from back home and everything. Mm -hmm. So, and you kind of have to have an average score. So it's a score from around, you may forget around like 20, 25 or something. It should be fine. You will be long listed. And then in, in the special, of course, some specialties are very competitive and they need like around 30 or so. Okay. Uh, but in the hematology, it's run around, my score was around 22. So I was long listed on the basis of the, that score. Yeah. So I, I'll upload the, uh, you yeah. know, the website where we can find the, yes. you know, the mark sheet and how it's yeah. marked and everything. So, okay, uh, Antra has given us a brief overview of the pre, you know, interview part. Let's talk about the interview. So guys, uh, we want to give a disclaimer here that we do not represent the NHS, the Dean Reach, the Royal Colleges, any of the hospital trusts or any of the specialist colleges. So uh, we can't go into much detail about the questions that were asked to her. But yes, uh, we would give you a brief idea about the stations and you know how to prepare and all. So yeah. Yeah. So uh, after the process of long listing, there is short listing, then you'll be called for the interview. So prior to the interview, of course, they'll send you the format. So mine was, of course, a kind of a Zoom interview because it was COVID times. So there are four stations. Uh, so among the four stations, the first station is, uh, you know, suitability and commitment where you'll be asked your reasons why you chose the speciality. So like I always said that I wanted to focus speciality, you know, because I felt like the group on specialities were half of the speciality, half of gen med. So I wasn't able to focus on that particular speciality. But group to specialities like heme, onco, I felt like they were very focused and you could focus on the uh, speciality. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, according to my personality, I, I felt that that is more suitable for me and I will told my uh, honest reasons for choosing the speciality. And second of all, I felt like, you know, it had a lot of potential to, you know, you, you can go into clinical work, you can go into research or you can just go into lab work. So there is a lot of, you know, you can choose the type of work you do at the end of your, you know, CCTA when you become a consultant. So you have a lot of choices after hematology training. So that was the first station where we spoke about the, you know, suitability and commitment when they ask you your reasons for choosing that speciality. Okay. Uh, the second station was, of course, uh, the general, you know, NHS, you know, professionalism and governance, where you need need to know about the NHS structures. So you need to know about, you know, you know how what's the hierarchy and whom to report uh, if there is supposed a blood transfusion reaction, whom to report, you know. So you need to know the hierarchy of the NHS and in general, you know, if there is some incident in the ward, how you would you manage it, you know, as per the NHS, as far as the GMC guidelines. So you need to know your basic, you know, NHS and GMC guidelines well for that station. Uh, the third station was, of course, a clinical scenario in specific to the speciality which they ask. Okay. And the fourth station would be, uh, in my time, it was basically they wanted to know about any research paper that you have read and they would want you to present or any, you know, topic that is a current topic that you would like to speak about or a case or a patient that you handle that you would like to speak about. Okay. So that's what you, your experience at working as a doctor in the specialty of hematology. So that's, the, those were the four stations. They basically don't assess you so much on uh, how much you know about hematology, but how much you know you're able to deal with certain situations, how much passionate you are about your speciality. So that's what I felt during my interview. Okay. Any specific preparation material or anything you used like? Yeah, I think uh, for the professionalism and governance uh, part, I uh, had this book. They have this interview book. I think I shared yeah. that with yeah. you. So I read that particular uh, you know book because again, because I am an IMG, so I have not been trained here. So I also needed to go through the guidelines and, you know, the hierarchy and, you know, those reporting systems and all that. So I used that book. And for specific to hematology, of course, I just read about the Oxford Handbook of uh, Hematology. So that's a small book. So you can just go through the, you know, hematological emergencies, you know, at, at, a, at the level of the IMT, how much hematology you need to know, not at the level of a speciality training. Okay. So those were the two books that I read. And of course, like the pre, uh, you know, assessment, I have already said that I collected the evidence from back home. So Antra really scored really very well in her interviews. She, she got the place where she wanted and yeah, so uh, you can also do that. But yes, as Antra said, you have to be very, very thorough with the things that you're going into. Okay, 
So the next thing I would like to ask you is about the uh, hematology training itself. Okay. How long is the training like and what can you expect? And since you've opted for less than full time, how does that impact and all you know? Yeah, uh, so uh, basically it's that uh, it's a five year training. So unlike a few of the group one specialities, which, is four, which are four years, it's a five year training. Uh, you are not on the medreg rota because you have two very tough exams to clear FRC path 1 at the end of ST5 and FRC path 2 at the end of ST7, ST8 which you need to clear. Uh, so that is basically the five years of training with two very tough exams and uh, uh, it has got, uh, I mean like I said you have postings where you need to be in, you know, in the lab, lab for a certain period of time, in the wards, then you have the clinics the day units where you get chemos and you are sent to specialized centers uh, for blood transfusion training like you have in Barnsley, Sheffield, okay. over here in the East Midlands. So you're sent for that. So you will be sent for you in all the specialized hematological, you know, sub specialities. So okay. you need to know a bit of everything. But it's a good thing that at the end of it, you know, at the end of ST5, ST6, they really want to know what you need, mean, what you plan to do at the end of your training. So some of the deaneries, they kind of have some fellowship programs also, which are out of program, uh, you know, fellowship programs, where you can opt for one year out of your training and get a fellowship, like a fellow in myeloma or a fellow in lymphoma, that sort of a thing. But that is optional depending on your interest. If somebody is interested in research, then one year as a fellow in research or something is also possible. But that's completely up to you if you want to extend the number of years of your training or all. But I've seen that most of this, you know, uh, ST5 and ST6 uh, trainees do that because that kind of adds to their uh, CV. So it's better when they apply as a consultant. So they have the specialized fellow in so and so. So that really helps with the yeah, I think steps. unfortunately as international medical graduates we are not much aware of these fellowships yes, and everything yeah, yeah. so what we we go into a tunnel vision like you know you enter the specialty training you have to finish specialty training in six years seven yes, years yeah but, but, but here uh, they are not in a rush to finish yes. the, uh, the, the speciality and they are more like I have seen like there are a few people who have finished their CCT, FRC path and now they are going for the fellow jobs because they are not in a rush to become a consultant because they are like oh no we really need to add something extra to our CV to be you know more you know prospective or, you know, considered to be you know. So guys, I had already made a video about less than full time in emergency yeah. medicine, but let's get a brief overview about that in medical specialties as well. So why did you choose less than full time? Uh, first of all, uh, because the specialty, even though it's like, you know, it's not an extension of internal medicine. It's a completely, it's a world where there is a lot of pathology in the form of lab work. There is a lot of, uh, you know, new uh, trials and new chemotherapy agents and all something which are not found in our textbooks when we did IIMTs. So it's a completely new speciality. So I felt like I really needed the time, you know, apart from the usual weekends to be, you know, academically to be sound about this speciality. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my reasons. The other reasons are family commitments. I've got a five-year-old daughter, so I want to spend time with her. So I didn't want to really, you know, spend, you know, have to, having to choose between spending time with my books and spending time with her. So I felt like, you know, I'm 80% less than full time. So one day I'll get for myself where I can focus on my speciality and the weekends I can, you know, balance between work, uh, academics and my family so that's my first so how process. does that affect your overall training period like you said it was five years yeah how does that become a 80 percent like? so it's like uh, since i'll be doing one uh, day less in a week so that's why it would be extending it would be around 10 months more so my training will be like five years 10 months more Okay. More. So depending on that, some people are even 60 percent. So I mean, their time period will be like extended. But again, like I said, uh, nobody is in a hurry to finish because as we are like, you know, in our country, we are like always looking at the finish line. Yeah. But here they are more focused on the journey and, you know, get, uh, acquiring the skills in the process. Exactly. So I, I think, I mean, we, we really need to have a balance of everything, yeah. not just the that the reason we are emphasizing on less than full time is because that's an option and we can always opt for yes, yes. you'll be getting a 
paid a little less because yeah. you work less. Yeah. Yes, your training might be getting prolonged. And yes, as Antra said, the finish line looks to be a little more far. Yeah. But you can still enjoy the embrace, the journey that we have here. Okay, Antra. So uh, the last thing that I would like, like to ask you is your pearls of wisdom to all the medical you know, aspirants who want to train in hematology or you know, want to get into specialty training. What would you say to them? Uh, well, I would say that it is doable. Uh, when we come into this country, this whole system, it seems very you know, overwhelming. The weather, the food, the people, the system. And you feel like, oh, you are just back being a you know foundation year trainee. But I would say that don't get overwhelmed because it is doable. I would say that it is much more doable for us because we kind of underestimate our knowledge and, you know, our abilities because we don't have these, you know, we don't really, oh, we have to get this leadership thing done. But then when you think about it, oh, well, I had planned this CME. I was, a you know, one of the organizing members of the CME. So that can be, you know, a part of my, you know, showing my leadership and managerial skills. It is just getting the evidence back from home so you know that kind of if you think about it you have all the competencies required to apply for the speciality but you don't really have it like you know the tick box way that they have it over here so i would say that it is doable and secondly uh, the interview process i would say that if you go through the you know specific that's a generic book and the speciality specific books then i think it is very doable within a matter of month i had uh, you know appeared with it i think i finished the interview you know getting shortlisted for the interview appearing for the interview and getting the results was done in a span of around 25 days so that was the only time span that i got to prepare but it is doable i would say yeah all right guys so yes if you want to ask for the questions you can drop us a message or you can mail me at the address that i'll be showing below so thank you so much andra we so much i heartily congratulate you and yes guys See, as Antra said, it's still doable. You've got families. We are arriving like in our 30s, mid-30s. You know, it, it's all still doable. So keep fighting, you know. Keep make sure that you get the right competencies at the right time. Get, uh, you know, through with the timetable when the posts are getting released, when you have the interviews and everything. And yes, if everything's all right, you'll be in the training one day, like mm -hmm. Antra. Okay. All the best, everyone. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. So Share much. it with your friends. And thank you, Antra. It was lovely talking to you. Thank she you is so our first face-to-face -face doctor for which we are posting this video. Thank you so thank much, guys. So Take much. care. Bye-bye.